It was about 10 or 12 days into the campaign after showing up at events like this and at grocery stores and at bowling alleys and skating rinks and so forth um, that I realized in hardware stores and department stores that my elementary school principal, who was one of my campaign managers, came running into my office and said, I've got, I've, I've got some speaking engagements for you. And I said, well, what are they? She goes, I got you 35 graduation speeches. So I was excited. And I, 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 I had a bunch of young people working for free for me. Uh, and said, so, look, what we've got to do is be smart. Let's go ahead and get all the voter registration forms in the city. Let's travel to every library to the election commission. Let's get them to order them. We've only got a few days, and we've got th 35 of these things. So let's be mindful. She said, baby, my elementary school principal, Ms. Jackson, she said, baby, these are not high school graduations. So I said, they must be middle school graduations. So I still want to make sure we grab <laughs> that we get, all of the, we get all the voter registration forms and we there may be older siblings or friends or family members or others who may have to change their, their address, and I just want to be armed and want to be ready. She said, sweetie, these are not middle school graduations. <laughs> so I said, well, Ms. Jackson, what, what are they? She said, honey, she said, I got you, I mean, to this day she calls me baby, and honey, she says, honey, I got you 35, she said, I got you 32 kindergarten graduation speeches <laughs> in the city of Memphis. So part of me wanted to be very angry and, and very upset, but I, it was hard to, to muster anger, at least sincere anger, because I had nothing competing with my time <laughs> other than showing up at events that I had not been invited to before. So at least these were formal invitations to come and speak. So I quickly did the math, and I said, well, what, what are the remaining three? She said, I have you three elementary school graduations. So I'm out doing these graduation speeches and going from one to the other. And it, I was, didn't want to do them, but I felt like I had to honor the work that she had done, and she, she was so excited about it, my principal was. So I'm out doing it. My dad, who at the time was a sitting member of Congress, was riding with me from event to event. And I was just roundly criticized all over the place. There were, uh, the, the radio show hosts were coming at me. I mean, I couldn't catch a break anywhere. They said I was too young, that I never had a full-time job, which was true, that my dad was trying to give me a job, that I hadn't earned this, that I didn't know any of the issues, that I didn't know the district, that I had lived in Washington for a good part of my life and then away at school. How could I think I could come back and do this job? So, I mean, over and over and over again, they would always say the nicest things about my dad, who they love. Um, and finally, you know, I'm halfway through this circuit of kindergarten speeches, and I'll never forget, I was going from, anybody in here from Memphis? I was going from Midtown in Memphis, a little school called Roselle Accelerated. It was one of the elementary schools, so it was a big day for me to speak at one of the older schools that morning. And then I was on my way to a kindergarten graduation about 20 minutes on the other side of town in North Memphis, which is where my mother's from in the elementary school she'd actually gone to called Valentine. So we're pulling into Valentine's driveway and it was a steep hill we had to go up in order to get to the, the top of the driveway. And I remember looking at my dad after they'd said some horrible things before we pulled into the driveway and said, why don't we get someone to say something positive about me? Call and we to just, let's rig a call. Let's get someone to say that I'm, I'm not a criminal, that, I, that, I, that, I, uh, that I've never done drugs, that I went to college, that I went to law school, that I've worked in Washington, something so people won't think I'm this horrible, awful person. So Joe, we pulled in, my dad said, don't do this. Let's just wait. We may have to do this at some point if no one calls in over the next few months, but we've got time. This is late May, let's let this work through. No sooner than he said that this lady called in, identified herself as a grandmother, and said that she listened to the show all the time and that she loved their show and believed in what they said, and they thanked her and had another joke at my expense, and said, um, she said, but I have to tell you, this is the grandmother talk, she said, I have to tell you, she said, up until yesterday, I wasn't going to vote for him, but I decided yesterday I'm going to vote for him. And so I thought you said you agreed with us, the radio host. I thought you said you agreed with us and that you didn't like him and you thought he was this or you thought he was that. She said, yeah, I did. She said, but yesterday I went to my granddaughter's kindergarten graduation. And she said, and there he was in, the front of the, in front of the auditorium. I had no idea he was speaking. And there he was. He showed up. And she said he got up there. So they said, well, what happened? He said he got up there and he started speaking. She said, and no sooner than he started speaking, every one of those kids fell asleep. But that didn't stop him. She said he kept going <laughs> and going and going and going and going and going and going. And when he finished, he took pictures with all the kids. He gave them their diplomas, their kindergarten diplomas. He took pictures with the teachers, their parents. She said, and so they interrupted. So well, wait a sec, you mean to tell us you're going to vote for him because he took pictures with everyone? He spoke to a group of kids who fell asleep. And, you know, how do you justify that? They began quoting what the newspaper said, which I'd get asked at the end of a kindergarten graduation. Let me ask you, do you think you convinced those kids to vote for you? And, and, and I'd say, I hope. And they said, well, even if you did, can they vote for you? I mean, they just made fun over and over. So these guys were repeating those lines. And the lady said, well, what made me change my mind on him is that I saw what he did after he spoke. He went into the kitchen and went back and shook hands and took pictures with everybody that worked at the school. 
And I admire and respect that and think that he's more of a person you all are giving him credit for. That moment changed everything for me. Because it was, uh, it was strange because I never thought the kindergarten graduations would amount to anything more than me just honoring Ms. Jackson's hard work. Um, I had grown up in politics. I'd done my dad's first campaign ad when I was four years old, bless you. I'd found my way working in every single campaign from my, my father, my uncles, and I learned campaigning just in the retail political way, touching people and seeing people and meeting people where they worship, where they work, where they shop, where they enjoy themselves. And my dad always taught me, you shake hands with everybody, that no one is better than anybody, and particularly the people who made possible the event or the dinner or the banquet or the happening, go see them and thank them as well. So I was just doing what, I was, what, what came natural to me to do. And after that, every mom, grandmom, aunt in Memphis or in the night, they'd call, they start calling in these radio shows. They all just adopted me as their own kid. I looked like I was about nine. I weighed about 140. <laughs> five pounds, I'd lost all this weight and I just, I wouldn't stop working. We'd show up to shake the hands as the, as the, as the, before the school year ended with all the bus drivers on their way to take the kids to school. We were there to uh, see, them, see them when they finished their shifts. I mean, we, we just wouldn't stop working. And I think that contributed. We won by, we had a tough race. We, uh, a week out from the campaign, it was 90, it was 96. And um, the 90, my dad's 94 opponent, remember how bad 94 was for Democrats. My dad's 94 opponent ran and ran a, ran a really competitive race. We ended up pulling away at the end, and we won by a sizable margin, which I write about in the book, by 60-40. And despite the fact that the district is predominantly, predominantly African-American, um, it wasn't when, when my dad first ran. He's to this date, is the only black guy in the country to beat an incumbent Republican uh, anywhere in the country for a congressional seat, and he did it in 74. He told him he had lost by 5,000 votes he didn't believe it. He went down to the election commission and protested and protested. And before you know it, he forced him to, uh, to uh, he, un he uncovered boxes of votes and ballots that had not been counted. They discovered he'd won by 500 votes. And the funny thing about it, he said, if they had told me I'd lost by 1,000 votes, I'd have never gone down there. He said, the fact they got greedy is what made me go down and question it. So after that race, I just, you know, continued that work. I still spoke at kindergarten graduations. I, I moved up to high schools <laughs> and even spoke at a few community colleges and colleges in the area. And, uh, I just worked my tail off and, and fortunately was able to enjoy uh, broad, broad support from some, Repu from some Republicans and a lot of Democrats across my district. That's great.